we have the trustworthy air conditioning blowing right in my neck. Yeah, gonna get a cold. Oh, anyways, I was not expecting to make a video today, but unexpected. Hey, that was the story of my life, isn't it? Today I was just walking out on a mall and I saw one of these. Yeah, these are probably, I will have to say, the biggest surprise of the day. No, of the week, no, no. I don't have a surprise in my life of the year. I, I actually don't know. Biggest surprise since I got my blessing tips. I mean, these are old. These are very old. But I'm still going to be talking about it because I just met it today, so it is brand new for me. If you're still wondering what it is. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. It's terrible. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I cannot see myself. DT6. Yes. This is the... Wait, what is it? What was the brand? Jesus, stop it with the Chinese brand names. Jesus, they, they, make, they make no sense. The Senfer DT6. <laughs> Anyways, I found this pair because I was browsing at that IEM store again. That one I sort of just intruded into and then just started listening to $2,000 IEMs. Yeah, I went into there and I was like, hey, looking around at kind of different IEMs and I was asking, hey, what, what is kind of the weirdest hybrid earphones you got they got some you know you know the expected stuff like the dynamic driver they got the um ah, shit what is it electrostatic and dynamic driver and some balance armature and this is a tri tribrid too except it is not the three thing you probably expected the two thing you probably expected is the balance armature and the dynamic driver but the third one it's a piezoelectric wow I, I actually haven't seen m too much of a piezoelectric action until today i been reading online about a bqeyz the spring 2 as it was like 160 dollars and a, hey sounds like a good piezoelectric pair right and then i was walking along and i found this i was it was just lying on top shelf and then i was looking at it Hey, these looks pretty fine. How much are these? I wouldn't believe my ears. <laughs> uh, equivalents of fourteen dollars. Yeah, it it's not brand new. Obviously, you can probably not see the wear and tear because this is the zoom camera I've been using particularly low resolution so that I can cheat easier. No, math teacher, don't look at us, please. I don't cheat. Fuck. Anyways, um, the send for DT6. Yeah, I got these for $14. Maybe actually, I will add in a cable and it's probably going to be 17 because this pair is actually secondhand. Oh yeah, I remember. Scum of consumerism. Yeah, second hand. And the cable, actually, I have it previously for my uh, MMCX modded MH750. Those are pretty fine. And <laughs> now, hey, why do you need a 750 when you have one pair of these, right? It's a tribrid. Ah, it's been four minutes. Come on, I haven't, I haven't been talking about anything really you want to hear yet. Let's cut the shit and start reviewing this pair because at fourteen dollars originally I feel like it's like twenty five bucks. It is a pair that surprises. It it, it it it's the wow factor that caught you by surprise. Definitely, that's what caught me by surprise, and that's what sort of just make me buy one impulsively after listening to just one minute. I took one minute to listen to this. And I bought it. <laughs> I'm not joking. One minute. Anyways, first, the appearance. It's beautiful. 
<laughs> I have to say, in an ocean of just really bland looking custom IEM, this metal shell, I mean, probably not very expensive, it just feels solid and very nice. And you see? Oh, oh fuck, you can probably cannot see. There. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is a potato, but you can see there are some like um, laser etched like patterns on it. Oh, that looks really nice. I really do enjoy this kind of look. And the back, they have like a sort of like a flower pattern, pattern on the back. Really cool as well because it's actually an open back IEM, which I'll be honest, I haven't seen any of those before actually. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you're wondering, the $14 that I said, I only paid for the earphones. The cable, yeah, as I, as I said previously, I bought it myself. And the ear tip, it's actually a memory foam ear tip that I bought very cheaply off just AliExpress. Yeah, these work, like, surprisingly fine. Yeah. yeah. So that's the looks. It looks beautiful. It looks... I thought it was $200, but it's 20 So that caught me. Yeah, these definitely look more fancy than they are. And let's talk about the build quality. Aha! Aha! I know this is a pair of second hand, but I think this is a universal problem because I've been looking around and a lot of people said the cute quality check of this pair is a little bit shoddy because the MMCX connector, connector takes a little bit of caressing to get it to make the proper sound. Actually though, what I did is that I take a pair of tweezers and there is like the little, the little clamp that clamps down on the middle needle of the MMCX cable. You basically, you want to use a tweezer and then just, you know, tweeze it in so that it can clamp onto the middle bit harder than what it's currently doing because it's certainly, it's really loose if you don't do it and now it gets tight. Nice. Anyways, the quality check, probably not, it didn't really, you know, have like a really good record for that, but it's nothing not fixable. They make a sound. And yeah, they do make a great sound. So, yeah. Talk about sound, maybe? I was, I know nothing about this pair before going in and then looking at it and then listening for one minute. I decided to buy it. Why? The wow factor. This pair, it wowed me. It gave me a ooh on my face. And I impulsively bought it. Best decision ever. <laughs> well, probably not the best decision ever. I've probably done better decisions than this before. Not that I can remember any, but... Mm. But this pair, it wows. <laughs> Let's talk about the internal structure. Because, as I said, it was a tribrid. Piezoelectric for the super highs. The dynamic driver for the mid lows. And a Bartlett's armature to fill out a gap in the middle. Like, it's it's 20 bucks. Well, how, how did they manage to find three drivers for that kind of price and then just stuff it all in into a really fancy looking shell and sell it for this cheap? I, I do not understand. I know the piezoelectric drivers, they're not really expensive because I've been digging into AliExpress now. I am going to make some of my own IEMs. Stay tuned for that. It's coming. I bought a bunch of tools and you're going to see me fail. I know you guys love doing that. Um... And, yeah, those are not expensive, but the balance armature, that's where I'm surprised. I mean, they're very cheap Chinese-made ones that sound like maybe 95% accurate to the knolls, but it's a 30034, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it's 43 or 34, but it's a knolls model that is sort of pretty well-known. <laughs> Oh no, that's not that. Oh fuck, I don't have to script for this. I don't. I didn't script this. This is totally impromptu, low effort video. Okay, it's pretty well known for basically just pretty well based. I mean, fuck, what the fuck am I talking about? Fuck, it's just a pretty well. It's a pretty good all rounder. That uh, 
that drive that balance armature driver. Oh my god. And a piezoelectric inside. It makes everything better. Oh, a lot of people are probably not gonna say that. I'm probably gonna be a little bit controversial over here. But a piezoelectric, it sings. Let's start with like all of the basics, like what I usually do. Let's talk about um, the bass. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do I have to start with the worst part of this this bear? The bass is sort of only the the only thing that I sort of have a little bit of problem with. Not too much of a problem to you know not warrant a buy, but it is a problem, and problem is a problem nonetheless. So let's talk about it. The bass. It's too presented, and it's not really well. It's re not really good quality of bass, and it's trying to push it to you. I will be co comparing these with the Blonnies and the Tin T2s, and I have to say, with comparing to the T2, I prefer the T2's bass way more because. In the T2, they have a special way of caressing and then delivering the bass on a silver platter to you, where you can sort of enjoy it. Where it does, he just throws bass at you and then say, yeah, deal with it. It's bass. Deal with it. Um, I wouldn't consider these bass to be um, muddy, because that's sort of an overused word for just terrible bass quality. But... I would have to say the bass on these, they are grainy. They are, like, powdery, if you know what I mean. It's not muddy. It's little, it's too textured and not really substantial. It doesn't go deep enough. There's a lot of it, but it doesn't go deep. I mean, a lot in the sense of me, I really don't like bass. I really don't like mid-bass especially. I love sub-bass, but I don't like mid-bass. And the thing has too much mid-bass. The sub-bass... It doesn't quite exist. It doesn't extend quite low. And that's sort of all I got to say about a bass. It's, it's acceptable. That's it. <laughs> And then we go to the mids, where we sort of begin to hit the um, balance armature within this. Yeah. These are good. It, these, these are good. The, the, the mids are good. <laughs> yeah. You don't expect this much from this little price. Because it's a balance armature. You get the balance armature, like the signature, where it's really sort of... A lot of people who doesn't like it will say it's sharp, but it's pretty direct and very accurate. It gets straight to the point. And the vocals, it's pretty forward. It's pretty good. And everything is sort of well-rounded in a really good package. It's a little bit grainy, I'll be really honest, but... Hey, what, 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 what's there to be complaining about? It's, it's 20 bucks. I'm sort of complaining, you know, I'm, if I'm going to be complaining about that, comparing, I'm comparing to my Blessing too, which is 320 bucks, And that's a really good value. I don't think it's really fair for these. But the, so let's just say the mids, they are good. They are definitely, it's there, it's supreme for the price because you don't really get mu too much of an option other than KZs so that you want to have a hybrid. Especially tribrid. Tribrid at this price is really rare. And to pull off like a bounce armature sound with the mids, bravo, DT6, bravo. And then we move on to the highs where the piezo electric begins to kick in and things start to get a little bit controversial. This is where the wow factor came from. This is where everything, the highs, it's delivered to you in short jabs. It just punches you. Oh, the one inch punch. It's so powerful and direct, the piezoelectric. It just creates the amount of sparkle that you feel like you're wearing something that is definitely 10 times the price. That initial sparkle, that initial impression. Damn. These feels like they definitely warrant a buy. But what about something after? 
the initial impression. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong, it's still very good. But after an ish, initial impression with the piezoelectric and its direct nature and its basically ability to bring such good highs into such a low price range, such a direct, let's not say good, because it's really controversial, let's say it that way, high into such a low price range. But there are problems. The piezoelectric sort of have a bad name in the community because of the noble Khan. I heard it. I heard it because I asked, can I hear something else for the piezoelectric? And then he just brought out the Khan. The, the, the lows, beautiful. Mids, beautiful. Highs. I'd rather be eating a pair of scissors than listening to that. I'd rather be eating a pair of scissors. Uh, how do you eat a scissor? I'm fine. I know it's depressing, but I'm fine. I know you want to see me die on camera, but I'm fine. Anyways, these, they actually controlled the highs quite well. Actually, surprisingly well. Much better than the con, because they suppressed the amount of presence of the ultra highs at, you know, beyond like 10 kilohertz. It is suppressed to a point that you don't really feel like the piezoelectric is, exists, but it's just there constantly with like the symbol crashes and the sibilance not in a bad way to just remind you something is up there in the high and in the, such a subtle way i enjoy it i really do enjoy it with many many songs like like you know psychedelic rock classic rock anything really <laughs> edm is pretty good as well because of the direct highs and accuracy Oh, okay. Actually, let's not say accuracy, but directness, the um, the harmonic distortion of the um, piezoelectric. It's pretty bad, but so let's not put it that way. But it's just basically the feel of the highs. They are so good, but it isn't without its problem. Let's say beyond the first impression, the big wow. Let's dig deeper in and. Uh, I'm gonna just say what Critical said. When there's too much high, like, let's say, a saxophone, things started to fall apart, particularly on the high end. I like the higher end of the frequency band because the highs, when there's too much of it and consistency, there's a consistent stream of very high frequency coming in. It will start to feel a little bit synthetic, a little bit just plucked out of thin air. It doesn't really feel substantial. It doesn't really feel like it's there. It's just making that sound for the sake of making that sound. Don't my, don't don't say anything, but it, it is a good sound. It is a really direct sound, but you just don't feel like it's saxophone anymore. It have a personal take to what a saxophone sounds like, and it sounds something like an EDM, like a synthesizer. Not the biggest fan, but I don't see it as much as a problem as Critical did, because mm, how much saxophone do you have in modern music anymore, anyways? Okay, so let's round it up. I've been actually digging into like many of the budget IEMs, like the the Moondrop, the Silver Spaceship, the SSR, SSP. I listened to all of those. Uh, the Tin T2, the Blon O3, I actually haven't heard those before, but I need to. I heard those are really soft and everything, it's that kind of thing, because, yeah. But those three pairs, the SSP or SSR, depends on which tuning you like, the T2 and the 
Blondes, the Blonde BL03. Those are the three pair that's every time going to be talked about. Every time. This pair, a little bit forgotten. A little bit underappreciated. Definitely underappreciated. Because despite of its problems, which there are plenty, that initial wow factor, that initial surprise it brings you, it's worth all, all its price. It's worth every single buck of the original 20 it's asking for, especially for 14, because I've got these for 14. What's not to love? What's really not to love? This is a really solid looking pair with a hefty weight to it. Everything feels really nice. It feels like it will last forever. These fit in my ears pretty well. And you can get a my cable and then it will just be a utility pair. Sure, the highs could be synthetic at times. Sure, the bass could be a little bit powdery. But for the highs, for that really surprise, the surprise factor, the highs, when it comes out, when it comes splashing out, not just regular, like coming out. No, not out of clouds, not out of clouds, ugh, fuck me, I'm drunk. Not out of closet, but just like splashing out the highs and the sparkliness the, the first one minute of you listening to it oh it's all worth it it's all worth it the piezoelectric the tribrid it's all worth it i love these pair especially for how much they cost especially for how unique it is because it's a tribrid especially for how low the price it is. Oh boy. I think there's a new... Not new kit. It's been around forever. I think there is a old kit that I just discovered. And I'm going to start recommending these to people. But with the big asterisk on the side. Because these are definitely not the safest wreck. T2, definitely safest wreck for the $50 price range. SSR, acquired taste. This, acquired taste as well. But if you can go in and you can try to listen to these, definitely do. They will surprise you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's you and me again. Yeah, I've been making some really terrible quality video without any editing and with just like a webcam. Yeah, school stuff. Math is hard. I'm Asian, but math is hard. And... Did I tell you? Math is hard. So I don't really have time to do any of the editing and the skits. I don't feel like setting up my camera anymore. But I feel like that's going to end by this summer. Hopefully I can get back on track and then start filming some more juicy content. Especially when my big shipment of AliExpress arrive over here. It's filled with earphone parts. Just like micro drivers, six millimeters, some piezoelectric drivers, the 13 millimeter in di diameter piezoelectric drivers, uh, I believe some knockoff knolls. <laughs> yeah, I'm going cheap here. Some knockoff knowns 33017, some knockoff two, uh, the pair, the, the knolls they use in the uh, 535, the, the, the that that whatever that is but just yeah that and then i bought a bunch of tools a bunch of stuff and i'll do it i'm gonna make my own earphone i'm gonna make my own end game be tuned in or not because i know not much people care about this channel but if you do subs oh yeah subscribe <laughs>